If you're looking for some low prep, fun summer activities for toddlers and preschoolers, then stay right where you are. In this video, I'm sharing 11 fun summer activities for toddlers and preschoolers that will help support your child's development as they learn through play. So if you don't wanna miss out on any of the fun, then stick around. My name is Jess and I am the face behind the Innovative Mama. I am a former preschool and kindergarten teacher and current toddler mom. I am super passionate about helping moms with the topics of pregnancy, parenting, and early education. So if you have a little one at home, then I would love for you to join our Innovative Mom Squad by clicking that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you never miss an upload. This video is part of a series of themed activities for toddlers and preschoolers. All of the activities that I'm about to mention are available in the summer unit of my Tiny Tots Toddler Curriculum, which is a play-based curriculum for toddlers and preschoolers ages 18 months to three years. You can check out the description box below for more information, but for now, let's check out these 11 easy and fun summer activities. Today we're going to start with fine motor activities, which will help to strengthen the muscles in your child's little hands and fingers. First up, we have magnetic sandpaper sandcastles. These are so fun and super easy to make. Start by gathering some fine grit sandpaper, then flip it over and draw various shapes on the back before cutting them out. Take some self-adhesive magnet sheets and cut out some pieces to adhere to the back of your sandcastle shapes. We wound up using some rolled up magnets, which I don't recommend because they kept coming off and curling off of the paper. But if that's all you have on hand, you can just hot glue the ends down to help them stay better. I used a cookie sheet for this activity, but you can use any type of magnetic surface that you'd like. Allow your child to use the pieces to build different sandcastle creations. What shape is this? Triangle. Triangle, good job. You wanna put that on here? Cool. This is a great way to enhance fine motor skills as well as spark creativity and problem solving skills in your child. I love activities where you have to feed an animal and guess what? Kids do too. Feed the Shark is a fun summer themed activity that will help to increase fine motor skills and hand-eye coordination. This activity is from the summer units of my Tiny Tots Toddler Curriculum. What makes this curriculum unique is that it's differentiated into three different levels in order to meet your child's individual readiness level. So there's orange, purple, and green. For the first level, or the orange level, your child simply has to feed the different fish to the shark, which will strengthen their hand-eye coordination and fine motor skills. If your child needs more of a challenge, then they would follow the directions for the purple level. So for this level, you can call out a particular color of fish and have them feed that color fish to the shark. It's orange. Uh, orange. Help. Help? Yeah. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. If your child still needs more of a challenge, I have numbers printed on the fish for the green level. Have your child look at one of the numbers on the fish to identify the number before they feed it to the shark, or you can call out a number and have them find it before they feed it to the shark. As I said before, all the activities in this video are part of my Tiny Tots summer unit. So if you wanna know more about that, then check out the links in the description box below. This next activity is so simple and fun for your little one. All you need are some different colored pipe cleaners and a mason jar or another type of clear container. Start by twisting some pipe cleaners into the shape of fish, then take a different colored pipe cleaner and bend the bottom into a hook shape. Add one fish to the jar and show your child how to use the hook to scoop it out. Once they get the hang of this, you can make this a little more challenging by adding more fish to the jar. Luke totally loved this activity and was concentrating really hard to try and hook the fish and get them out of the jar. I also grabbed a magnetic wand and let him explore with that as well. So feel free to switch it up or put your own twist on this activity. Sensory activities have so many benefits for your child's development. Plus they are always super fun. So I always include them in my units. This sand painting activity is so simple, but adds a fun sensory element to some ordinary painting. Set up some cups with different colored washable paint along with some sand and stir them up so the sand is mixed into the paint. 
Have a child either use a brush or their fingers to paint freely onto their paper. I wanted to let Luke do a mixture of both so that he could feel the sand with his fingers as he was painting. He absolutely loved this activity and exploring the texture of the sand between his fingers. The paint will also cause the sand to stick to the paper when it dries, so you can have your child run their fingers over it again to feel the texture of the sand at that time as well. I would definitely opt for doing this one outside if you can. Unfortunately, it was raining the day I filmed this, so we had to keep it inside. It honestly wasn't as messy as I thought it was going to be, but it definitely can be. So that's just something to keep in mind. This shell cleaning activity is such a fun theme for a sensory bin. I definitely advise taking this one outside if possible, because with the sand and the water, things definitely do get messy. I used our Ikea fleece set sensory table, which I absolutely love by the way, and I highly recommend it if you're looking for a versatile sensory table. I set up one bin with sand, shells, and a paintbrush, and the other with soapy water, a toothbrush for cleaning, and some of these little blue fire rocks that I had laying around. I showed Luke how to dig the shells out of the sandy side, brush them off, and then clean them with the toothbrush and the water, which he did a little bit, but he mostly just liked exploring the different objects and playing in the water and sand which is the whole point of a sensory bin. I love providing different materials in themed sensory bins like this and just watching as Luke explores. Children benefit so much from this type of exploratory free play. Gross motor activities are super important for your child's development of large muscle groups, specifically arms, legs, and torso. This fish beanbag toss is a great way to get those arms moving, plus it's super easy to set up. Are you seeing my theme here? I printed these fish printables for my summer unit and taped them to some bean bags. You can do this outside. Unfortunately, the week I was filming most of these activities, we had so much rain, so we did it inside. I took a large bowl and had Luke try and toss the bean bags into the bowl. You can also use a hula hoop or whatever other kind of target that you'd like. Luke has a habit of just running up to the bowl and dropping things in it right now. So just go with the flow of whatever your toddler wants to do. They're still getting a learning experience out of it. This is a great classic activity for a hot summer day. A sponge relay will help your child work gross motor muscle groups and fine motor muscle groups at the same time while having some fun with water. Set up two buckets on opposite ends of your yard. Start with one filled with water and one empty. Model for your child how to soak the sponge before running it to the other bucket and squeezing it out. Try and encourage your child to keep repeating this to fill up the opposite bucket with water. If you're looking for some ways to extend this activity, some ideas are set up different colored sponges and buckets and have your child match the sponges to the same colored buckets. For example, run the green sponge to the green bucket and the red sponge to the red bucket. You can also have your child count how many times he or she needed to squeeze the sponge to fill the empty bucket, or you can have your child get to the other bucket in a different way. For example, give them a direction to hop, crawl, walk backwards, run, etc. If you're liking these activity ideas so far, then please give that thumbs up button a quick click and let us know in the comments, what is your favorite thing about summer? Cognitive development has to do with anything that makes your child think, explore, problem solve, and figure things out in the world around them. Exploring shells is such a fun, open-ended science activity that's perfect for your little explorer. I filled a small, shallow tray with a thin layer of sand, then placed some different shells in there, along with some magnifying glasses and a brush. Like I said, this is an open-ended activity, so allow your little one to just explore the shells. You can definitely spark some conversation and encourage language and vocabulary development during this activity by talking to your child about what they're seeing and asking questions. You can ask things like, how do the shells feel? Are they smooth? Are they bumpy? What colors do you see? Can you find me a big shell? How about a small one? Sorting activities are great for improving your child's cognitive development. I just printed the color sorting activity from my Tiny Top Summer Unit. So if you're using this one, you just have your child match the fish to the correct colored bowl. Alternatively, you can also paint some shells and use some construction paper as sorting mats to have your child sort the shells by color. If your child needs more of a challenge, you can gather some different size shells and have him or her sort them by size. 
Tin foil adds an awesome sensory element to this art project. You simply wrap some tin foil around a piece of cardboard and have your child paint the whole thing blue. Once it's dry, have them add some ocean animal stickers to it to make their own little ocean scene. It's so easy, but it came out super cute and Luke really enjoyed it. It's so fun for toddlers to paint on the shiny tin foil and to hear it crinkle as the brush goes over it. I will link the stickers that we used in the description box. I really did like them because of how real they looked, but I realized afterwards that they are reusable stickers, so they didn't adhere super, super well. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're planning on saving this art project. Another super easy summer themed art activity is this popsicle craft. I grabbed some pieces of felt, but you can use construction paper or brightly colored cardstock as well. I just traced and cut out the two popsicle outlines. Then I had Luke decorate them with some pom poms and glitter before gluing them onto large craft sticks. If your child can cut, then you can definitely have them do that part as well, but Luke isn't quite there yet. For more fun developmental themed activities for toddlers and preschoolers, definitely go check out this playlist linked right up here. I will also link it down below in the description box. If you're looking for more summer themed activities for toddlers and preschoolers, go check out my Tiny Tots summer unit. It includes all of these activities and more. It's perfect for fighting summer boredom and keeping those little brains learning. Don't forget to subscribe before you go and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and let us know in the comments what your favorite activity was. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.